bright sunshine and give God the glory, glory. Today's video is all about how to make bone broth from the coop to the stew. We've been locking our birds in this tiny coop at night because we have a raccoon issue and we wanted to keep them safe so the raccoon doesn't get any more than they've already gotten. In the kitchen, we save all of our chicken scraps for our birds so that we can save on chicken feet and give them a more nutritious diet. Guys, they're supposed to wear their shoes in the coop. I promise that is a family rule. There are a few things off the top of our head that you should never feed chickens, and that is bell peppers, mango, avocado, and potatoes. We also try to not feed them much processed food or foods that have a lot of sugar or food dyes in them just because we know these are not healthy for us or them. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in chapter 1, verse 24, it says, Let the land produce creatures according to their kind, the livestock according to its kind. So we know that the chicken came first because God said so. Are laid by Sophia, one of our favorite chickens, the blue. And then these were laid by Rona. They're the tiniest little eggs ever. So we have these two roosters and we don't keep roosters because we don't want to bother our neighbors with their crowing. So we processed them. It is really important to our family that our kids learn how to raise animals properly, process them, and prepare them for food. So each of our kids have learned how to process a chicken. Okay, on to making bone broth. The real reason we use chicken feet in our broth is because it provides collagen in the broth as well as healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. Next, we add onion. Sometimes when we're cooking other meals, we save the onion peels in a freezer bag and then dump just the peels and the outside layer in. We only use organic onion and organic garlic. Normally, we would use fresh organic garlic and chop it, but we were out of that. So we're just gonna use this minced garlic that we already had. Bone broth is just so much better with salt. So today we used a Himalayan pink salt that's organic, but any form of salt that has minerals still in it and that's not been processed is your best bet. We like to put a splash of apple cider vinegar in that helps break down the bones. And also, if you have eggshells laying around, you can add eggshells. That will add more calcium to your broth. And then, because our chicken was frozen, we went ahead and put our Instapot on saute and got the chicken thawed enough that we could shove it down deep into the pot below the water line. Then we set our Instapot to 25 minutes making sure that all the pieces and parts are on the right way, and turn it on. Then once it is done cooking, we go ahead and let the steam out, open up our pot, and pull out the chicken that we can get. Now, because this is just a backyard rooster and it wasn't intended to be used for meat, there's not a whole lot of good meat on it and the meat is kind of stringy. So I just pull off what I can really quickly to use in a chicken and rice soup. And then I put the lid back on, making sure that all the parts are on it properly and I pressure cook it two more times for 35 minutes each time. If this had been an organic chicken from our local chicken farm, Shank Family Farms, I would have first cooked it in the oven and we would have had it for dinner and then we would have used the bones that were left to make the broth. I love to use this broth to cook vegetables but also to cook soups with. So in the winter I keep two or three soups in the fridge almost all the time and we serve them as appetizers to basically every meal. So really quick I'm going to prepare a chicken and rice soup to go with our dinner tonight. 
When possible, we use organic vegetables. So we use an organic onion, organic carrot, and organic celery. We chop them really quick, throw them in a pot, and we add some of the broth we just made to cook them really quick. Anyway. Then we add salt and pepper, more broth, and the chicken that we already cooked. This makes an excellent appetizer or even a meal with some fresh bread. I found this really cool website called Eat Well, Enjoy Life. One of the things that they say in their top 10 bone broth benefits is that bone broth contains several amino acids that boost nutrient metabolism and improves antioxidant efficiency. I think that's pretty cool. Some other cool things that they said about bone broth. <laughs> bone broth is that it heals leaky gut, it can help with detoxification, can increase the appearance of hair, skin, and nails. It helps with arthritis and joint pain by rebuilding the cart cartilage in those parts of your body. It helps feed and build the immune system. It helps decrease inflammation and it's anti-aging. And my favorite, which is forming healthy bones and teeth. That's just a few reasons to add bone broth to your diet. We like to use our bone broth whenever we're cooking vegetables or steaming vegetables. Whenever we're making something like mashed potatoes or rice, we use it as our liquid. We also use it for our base for all of our soups or anytime we're cooking something that requires a liquid, we use bone broth. Some of our favorite soups are the chicken and rice soup that we showed you, a Mexican soup. Um, we like mushroom soup, egg drop soup. They're all amazing with this broth. So here we are adding cauliflower rice in, in place of traditional rice. Sometimes I choose to use a vegetable in place of a starch if I can get away with it. And since my husband is eating low carb currently, this is an easy substitution for me that makes him happy and gives more vegetables to our meals. And you may have noticed that the cauliflower rice is not organic. It's not organic because we could not find organic. They were out of it at the store that we were shopping at. So we got this instead. We substitute when we can and we don't panic when we can't. I'm riding with Nikki and she's trying to teach me about why cauliflower is on the non-dirty list and why it's okay that we're using the non-organic cauliflower in our chicken and rice soup. Mama, why? Because cauliflower actually produces some kind of something. In half a mile, continue on to US 70 West. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. The cauliflower produces some. Continue on US 70 West Stop for 16 miles. Me. Lady on the map. <laughs> cauliflower produces something to deter bugs. So farmers actually don't have to spray cauliflower as much as like other vegetables. So it's not on the dirty dozen list. Look it up. Is broccoli? I don't think so. But you can look it up. So Nikki from Fisher Priceless and I are actually on a road trip while I'm editing this video. That's why we stuck that in there because she was explaining to me not to be worried about the cauliflower not being organic since it is not on the Dirty Dozen. And we checked and broccoli is not on the Dirty Dozen either. The Dirty Dozen is basically a list of fruits and vegetables that you should always buy in organic form. That is because they are the dirtiest ones that are available to us here in America. One of the reasons that we make changes about things such as this is that any step we can make to help keep our family healthier is a step in the right direction. If you'd like to learn a lot about how to eat healthy and you'd like to learn it really quickly, I recommend that you check out Weston A. Price Foundation. The information that they have is invaluable. In spite of us living at the beach, we still love to have chickens.